Just about anything tastes better when it's wrapped in phyllo dough. And today we're going to wrap some salmon in phyllo. It's a really pretty simple dish. We've got some fresh salmon, some great lemon, a little bit of fresh dill, and a garlic and herb cheese. You can find this in the deli. But the star of this show is actually the phyllo dough. Maybe you say phyllo dough, either way is correct. But it's something that you can find in your grocer's freezer. Comes in a box and it's rolled up tight like this. I know that a lot of people get a little bit nervous about working with phyllo dough, but you know, once you've got the hang of it, it is so easy to use. And truly, I think it's hard to replicate. It's so crispy and so light at the same time. Wonderful stuff. It comes in these thin, thin sheets. The word phyllo is literally Greek for leaf. And you can see how incredibly thin it is. Now here's the hardest part about phyllo. It dries out immediately. In fact, I'm gonna put a piece over here to show you just what'll happen if we don't keep it covered. But the nice thing about phyllo is if you use part of a roll, you can refreeze it without any issues. So I'm gonna get this one ready to go back in the freezer. Working with it, however, Here's where I'm keeping it. I've got it staged. It goes back to the whole bit of cooking. You've got to cook with a plan. You've got to know what you're doing in advance to make it easy. So I've staged this. I've got my whole stack of phyllo on a sheet tray underneath the wrapper that it came in. If you lose that somehow, you can go ahead and use wax paper, parchment paper, or saran wrap. And then I've got just a barely damp towel over top. This way I can work at my leisure with the dough but each time I remove a piece, I'm gonna cover it back up. So let's get started. I will peel off one sheet, and if it rips, don't worry, it's the most forgiving dough, and you have to use layers of it anyway. In fact, this one's ripped. I may abandon this top piece. I don't want it completely ripped. But if it rips a little, that's all right. And you know, here's a, another tip for you. When you go to the grocery store, go to the freezer and get the box from the back. That means it's the freshest dough and least apt to rip on you. Okay, so we covered it back up. The important part is to start by brushing the edges of the dough. So I've got some melted butter today, but you can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil, but you do need some kind of fat on the dough to make it work. So start by brushing the edges because they dry out fastest. And I'm really not drenching this in butter, just a little a little bit around the edges, and then a, just a quick splash through the center. And that's enough to stop it from drying out. Now, here's the thing that makes this recipe really special. I'm gonna add some flavor in between each layer. So I've got a little bit of our fresh dill, just sprinkle it, and a little bit of lemon zest. Just a touch, and these are really complementary flavors to the fish. If you were doing a dessert, maybe you'd use cinnamon and sugar in between the layers, but in this case, I want something that matches our fish. We'll uncover the dough. Grab another piece, lay it on top, and I'm going to quickly cover my stack. And I'll repeat with the butter, again, starting at the edges because they will rip and tear the fastest. But I'm not being particularly gentle here. If you were up close with me, you'd see that I'm kind of manhandling this a bit, and it's okay. And now you can see that the um, dill and the butter show through the layers, and it's so pretty. Another little bit of dill. The great thing about this is, this is a dish that if you're having a dinner party, you could put together early in the day and put in the fridge and bake off when your guests arrive. Go for another sheet of phyllo. If you have some favorite fillings, maybe a, a cheese mixture that you like, or the Greek spanakopita, uh, phyllo dough makes for great hors d'oeuvres as well. Just about anything truly tastes better in a buttery little dough. So here's one more sheet. We'll brush it. A really quick and easy hors d'oeuvre is to take a whole log of goat cheese, a long log of goat cheese, 
roll it in some herbs, and wrap it in the phyllo as we're going to do with the salmon today. You can bake it, let it get to room temp before slicing it. It's delicious. It's gorgeous on a salad for a first course. A little bit more lemon. You'll see when this is baked how really pretty the colors are between the layers, too. And here's our last sheet. We're going to use four sheets of phyllo for this. And this unused portion can go back in the freezer. Just a little bit more butter. And as I say, you could try it with olive oil. That's really nice. But in this case, I think butter and salmon and lemon and dill, it's a great combination. Now we're going to place our fish. Oh, actually, I've got to cut this into two pieces because this is enough dough to wrap two pieces of fish. So I'll just cut it down the center. If you're making something like baklava or spanakopita, where you're going to be making a lot of pieces, a pizza cutter works great. It's a great thing. But for one little slice, this is pretty easy. So we're taking our salmon, and I'm going to really generously season it with salt and pepper. A bit of salt. And now I'm going to top it with the garlic herb cheese. I love this cheese. You see it in the deli. It's great just on a cracker. It's great in any number of hors d'oeuvres. In this case, I'm going to top the salmon with it. I'm telling you to slice it. I'm going to tell you it's going to crumble. You're not going to get beautiful slices. Don't worry about that. You can kind of mash it on top of the fish. But we'll just take a little piece of this. and lay it over. See how it crumbles? That's okay because it's all going to get messy, melty and gooey and oozy when it bakes. It's delicious. Another little bit. Just kind of mush it on there. So now that we've got the cheese over the top of the fish, it's all ready to roll. And again, it's pretty easy. We're just going to start by folding up the end of our dough and kind of like wrapping a package. And in the beginning, if it doesn't look really neat to you, don't worry. It is so forgiving. Okay, so I fold it over the fish. Over it goes. Fold in my edges. And keep going. And we've got a little fish parcel. Now, it's very important at this point to brush it with butter on the outside because this underneath never got a little butter bath like the rest did. And can you see the dill poking through and the lemon? I just love it. I think this is beautiful. You'll want to put this on a baking sheet that you've sprayed with some no-stick spray. You definitely don't want this to stick. Yum. We'll pop it in the oven. These are gorgeous, golden brown. The butter, the phyllo smells so good. The salmon smells delicious. These are really so easy. And I want to show you what they look like on the inside. There you can see the cheese on the top. It's just delicious. But I want to remind you, we talked about what would happen if you don't cover your phyllo dough. Here's that piece that I let sit here. And there's no way I could fold that up. So keep it covered if you don't want it to look like this. And you'll find this whole recipe on CETConnect.org. Just click Amy's table.